Good morning, everybody. Charlie here with another video uh, about the Triquetra. Uh, if you haven't used it before, uh, you could might find this fa fairly useful. I'm going to try to keep this fairly short, though. Uh, basically, what we're going to be talking about today is the Gco Generator version seven and setting it up with Mach three, which is a new uh, addition to the Gco Generator. Uh, I've got a local friend of mine named Paul that uh, has a CNC machine that uses Mach 3 and since I got this script up and running I contacted him and asked him if I could come out to his house and show him what I had of course he was thrilled to take a look at it so took it over there we set it up on his machine and uh, we're going to show that here just a little bit later in this video uh, let's start out though let's look at the uh, g-code generator uh, if you haven't used it before this is a page right here is just the cover page give you some basic information on how to use it uh, but one of the first places you're going to want to go to if this is a new setup for you is go to the navigation menu right here this blue button and go down to the settings page now everybody whether you're Mach 3 user or not you got to go here first uh, this is where you're going to put the measurements of your touch plate in this little diagram over here I've got a picture of your touch plate turned upside down that shows the x-axis the y-axis and then the z-axis right here so you're going to put those numbers in right here uh, you can put them in in metric or in uh, imperial I guess is the word inches and millimeters how about that uh, just by clicking these buttons right here so we're going to go in inches because in Mach 3 uh, the script is only written to work in inches now if you uh, use millimeters you can still put this information in in millimeters and the Mach 3 uh, page will automatically convert that over to inches for you so you don't have to come over here and change this to inches if you normally use millimeters we're gonna go inches anyway uh, most of the touch plates that I ship out are the z-axis depth is approximately 0.8 inches so I'm just gonna put 0.8 right there and then the x-axis is approximately 2 inches so I'll just put a 2 there and so is the y-axis so another two Let's keep it simple once you've done this uh, these uh, measurements are automatically exported throughout the whole spreadsheet various pages for you so you don't really have to come back here and change this unless you're fine-tuning which that's a whole other video uh, I recommend you look, look at that because uh, if you just got your touch plate and you're just setting it up for the first time uh, you're gonna want to measure it and uh, then you're going to have to fine tune to get it where it gets a really, really accurate zero. So, anyway, but for Mach 3, what we're going to do now is go back to the main menu, since we have our measurements put in, and choose Mach 3 script button right here. And this is our Mach 3 G code script page. The first couple of lines here are the important ones. Okay, this shows the plate thickness the uh, Y width and the X width that's these numbers right here on the left you can't change them right here this is just on here to show you that they're in there uh, if these are not correct go back to the settings page and, and make adjustments from there the other thing on this page that you're going to want to do is set your feed rate uh, I recommend somewhere around three to five you can go as slow as one uh, this box will change colors depending on the value put in there if you if you put a zero in there for example it'll it'll turn red showing you that there's something wrong there but if you look over at the uh, script the probe feed is actually set to one so if you put it as a zero uh, I'm gonna assume that you want to go as slow as possible so I, I made it so it shows up as a one uh, any other number you put in there, if you put in a 2, you'll notice it changed to a 2 right down here. Uh, and, it, and it turned green, showing you that you're in a, running at a safe speed. Same thing if you go up to a 5, it changed to a 5. Now if you go above a 5, let's just say you put it in as a 6. Okay, it did accept the 6, but it turned red up here, showing you that you could be going a little bit fast. Uh, you can run this up to whatever you really want to. You want to run it at 10 inches a minute? Go for it. Uh, 
I think if you do, you're going to be disappointed <clears throat> because you're not going to get a very accurate zero and you're probably going to start breaking bits. So, uh, when I ran this with my friend Paul, we ran it at a, at a 5 inches per minute and it worked pretty well. So, I think you'll be happy with that speed. So, feed rate aside, the next thing you're going to do is you need to copy all this script and there's quite a few lines of it down here and it's all got to get copied over into a spreadsheet or into a Mach 3. Easiest way to do that is click on this button if you have macros enabled. If you don't have macros enabled then you're going to want to click right here with your left mouse button, hold it down, drag all the way to the bottom to get to the last line there and then you right click and select copy. Now that all the script is copied to the uh, clipboard. Alternatively, let me, uh, okay, now I've got it un uncopied. <laughs> okay, if you have macros enabled, you just click this button and bingo, it's all copied to the clipboard for you. So that just kind of simplifies it. So once you've got that done, now we need to, to the best way to do this is to uh, create a new text document. So I'm just going to right click on my desktop here, choose new text document and you can call it whatever you want open it up right click and paste and there you have it there's the Mach 3 script okay you can save this as a file whatever name you want to put doesn't really matter and then you can take that file out to your CNC if you don't have uh, Excel on your CNC computer you can do all this in the house and then take it out on a thumb drive or however you get your data out to your CNC machine. On the uh, alternate XY0 location, uh, this does not currently work with Mach 3. However, uh, Mach 3 does provide a means of setting alternate locations, but uh, in, a next, in a future update of the G-Code generator, I will be incorporating that so that you can actually set it right here uh, and then when you run the zeroing code in Mach 3 it will automatically take care of that for you so you won't have to go in and change other Mach 3 settings but as of right now in this release uh, version 7A1 it does not work with Mach 3 uh, this page will only work with general generic uh, standard G code uh, there is a page for fine tuning and this is where you'll put in fine tuning adjustments and like I say there's another video that covers all that and we've got a page here for stepper calibration. Now I think uh, probably for Mach 3, that's already built into Mach 3, so you won't have to really use this. But if you want to, you can. Uh, this is primarily for Gerbil or just uh, standard G-code users. Uh, there's also a revision history page, which if you really care to read it, <laughs> document what I've changed in each version. So anyway, that's it for this part. So. Let's get the, uh, the other video rolling uh, with the actual installation of Mach 3 and testing with uh, my friend Paul. Okay. So we've got the files on a thumb drive. It's plugged into the side of the computer. And we're ready to load the script into Mach 3. Uh, if you have any existing script in there, you probably want to save that to another file before you put this new script in there just in case you need to go back to it. But in this case, there is no existing script. So we'll start by clicking on the operator button then scroll down a few lines there and it'll say edit script button you'll click on that and then uh, you'll have server button start flashing we're going to click on the auto tool zero button that opens up a script window so now we're going to go to the thumb drive and uh, is there anything in there? there is something okay just go ahead and delete that there we go now we need to open up the thumb drive Okay, the thumb drive is open. We're going to go to the Mach 3 script, open that, and if you choose edit and then select all, it's down towards the bottom there, and then right click and copy. Now you can close that window, you're done with that. Then go into the Mach 3 window, right click and paste. Now we need to choose the file menu and choose save. Now you can close that window and close down your other windows there that are open and now that tool is or that script is set for the auto tool zero button 
So we're going to re reposition the camera and we'll move over to the CNC machine and see, what, see how well it works. Okay, okay go ahead. Auto Zero tool. Click that button. You come up with zero Z zero. If you're going to zero all three axes, you want no. You can either click OK or you can hit just hit enter. Comes up tool diameter. Yeah. My bit is 0.25 inches. Yeah, no, don't, don't click OK, that's the one reposition. Okay, go ahead. Okay. The drive's over. Bingo. Let me move that. Now you can hit your go to zero. And there you have it. Okay, Paul, what size bit is this? This is a 60 degree quarter inch shank, half inch diameter V-bit. Okay, so to zero this one, let me get back over on the screen over here. So we're going to click the auto tool auto to zero, zero button. We're going to zero all three so we won't know. And then the actual diameter of the widest part of this bit was 0.503. So we, we measured that with a micrometer. The, bit, the, the box said it was a half inch bit, but when we measured it, it actually measured out to 0.503. So that's what we put in the Mach 3 screen. So let me get the camera back over here and we'll zero this bit. Now because this bit has only two cutting edges, it's not the same diameter all the way around. So we'll start out by zeroing just one edge and then after it moves around to the back side to come back forward for the y-axis, we'll turn the bit. So go ahead, Paul. So now that we're zeroing to the same surface or the same cutting edge, I've rotated that bit. Okay, now I'll move the touch plate and we'll hit go to zero and see where that bit winds up. Let me turn that. And I think you can see we got a pretty darn good zero.